Okay. We're back. We're back for day two of trigonometry, radians, angles, all that good stuff, exact values. Um, this is the page that we left off on yesterday. Now, before we do that, I added in a quick review of quadrants and reference angles is based on some of the conversations we've had. So this was something you learned in grade 11. Um, however, uh, now we're doing it with radians, so it might look a little different, but it's still actually the same thing. So when you're in quadrant one and you're drawing your terminal arm, okay, from there to there, that's gonna be your reference angle. Okay, now also, when we're trying to measure a rotation, we generally call the rotation theta. So in quadrant one, any angle that's a reference angle is the theta value you're looking for. Let's say your terminal arm now is in quadrant two. Okay, so the reference angle is always between the nearest x-axis and the terminal arm. But now, when I'm rotating around trying to figure out what theta is, I need to figure, I need to use this formula to figure out theta. Okay, so because this is pi, it just makes sense that, okay, well, to go from here to here would be the same thing as going from here to pi and then subtracting the reference angle, okay? So hence that formula there. Now, if you're over here in quadrant three, and I will just maybe switch colors here just so it doesn't get too confusing. So there it is. Here's my theta r, and here's my rotation from there to there, and that would be theta. Well, it just makes sense that I'm gonna go pi plus my reference angle to figure out my total rotation theta. So you have this formula in quadrant three. Now the last quadrant, quadrant four, so there's our terminal arm, here's theta r, and let's do our rotation from here all the way there to get theta. Well, this is two pi, okay? So theta would be going all the way to two pi and then going back the reference angle, okay? So you get this formula that your theta value is two pi minus theta r. Okay, well, once you understand all that, you're ready to do questions that involve angles and exact values, okay? So you'll have, you'll have your quadrant one values memorized at least, and you'll get a lot of questions like this on the exam. So it says, well, if theta is from zero to two pi, um, can you find the angles for sine theta equals a half? I like to draw a sketch every time, okay? So for sine theta equals a half, notice how it's positive a half, okay? So the first thing you can do is you can write that inverse sine of a half that's your reference angle, okay? So when you do that, this is an exact value, so you're gonna have to think about it in your head. Um, when it's a half, I believe it's going to be, um, well, I didn't even write, uh, pi over six, okay? That's from a unit circle. Now, where is the sine value or y values positive because it's positive a half? Well, sine is positive in quadrant one and in quadrant two. So in quadrant one, we know that the theta value is the reference angle. So one of your answers will be that. Now in quadrant two, if we draw the sketch, so this is pi over six, this is pi, and you're trying to figure out from there to there, well, you know that you're gonna have to go pi subtract pi over six, right? And then get a common denominator, you're gonna get five pi over six. Boom, that one's done. Let's take a look at B. This one's a little bit trickier because the value is negative. Now, when you're finding your reference angle, you're always going to plug in the positive value. So even though this ratio is negative, you plug in uh, one half and you think, so you're in quadrant one, where is my coast value a half? Is it 30 degrees, 45, um, or 60? Um, this is gonna be 60 degrees, so this is pi over three. Um, then you go look and say, okay, but cos theta is negative a half, um, cos theta is my x values, where are my x values negative, quadrant two and quadrant uh, three. So if you get the sketch, um, you can sketch this as pi over three, that's gonna be the theta value you're looking for, and that's pi. So one value for theta could be pi minus pi over three, right? That just makes sense. Get a common denominator. I'm gonna save myself some room. So this is gonna be three pi over three, and I get two pi over three. Now you might choose to memorize that, right? Because you can memorize what's your cos value in, in quadrant two where it's negative a half, but I just rather do this because it's less memorization. Uh, okay, in quadrant uh, number three here, same picture, that's pi over three, except now I'm rotating, maybe I'll switch colors. I'm rotating from here to there. 
okay? So that's going to be pi plus my reference angle, so pi plus pi over 3, and you're going to get 4 pi over 3. Okay, really briefly, I just want to tell you, like, what does this mean? Okay, so what does it mean that like cos theta is, is negative a half and then I get theta equals 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3? Well, if you go plug in on your calculator and you need to be in radians, if you were to plug in cos 2 pi over 3, you would get the answer of negative a half if you plug that in on your calculator. Okay, so that's what it means is you are finding the, 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 how many, how, what rotation do you need to get the terminal arm that would give you this ratio of negative a half for your cosine ratio? Okay, tan being negative one. Um, these ones are, you know, a little bit different. Well, not really actually. So you can go inverse tan of one. Now the only place where your tangent value is one in quadrant one is at 45 degrees or pi over four. Okay, now tan is where y and x um, one of them is negative, one of them is positive, okay? For that overall ratio of y over x to be negative. If they were both negative, then you'd have a positive tan ratio. So quadrant two is a place where you have only one negative value. It's your x values that are negative, your y values are positive. And then quadrant four is the other place. So in quadrant two, again, we can get our sketch, pi over four, do that rotation. And this is pi, so you can go pi subtract pi over four. That's going to give you 3 pi over 4. Now let's go ahead and switch colors. Um, in quadrant 4 over here, this time we're using 2 pi. And there's my reference angle, so we're rotating all the way around like that. So that's going to give us a theta value of 2 pi minus pi over 4. Now if you do the math, this is going to be 8 pi over 4, subtract pi over 4, and you get 7 pi. Done. All right. We are sucking these up, no problem. Cos theta equals one. This is like what I like to call the special ones, right? Because there's only four places um, where you have the point zero, one, or one, zero. All right. So where on the unit circle is my x value positive one? Okay. Well, it's either going to happen here or possibly over here. Now over here it's negative one, so that's not an answer. This is an answer. You just need to remind yourself. Well, this is zero degrees. Um, or 2 pi. So 0 radians or 2 pi radians. There's two answers there. You're done. Okay, so those questions can get a little long. They generally tend to be two or three marks on the exam, so make sure you get those ones in. Do your homework. <laughs> All right. Now, what's happening on these ones? Well, a little bit trickier. Because in part F here, we have a cotangent. So we'll take a look at that one. But also on this one, we now have a different interval. So sometimes they like to mess with the interval and make them worth a few more marks. This has negative two pi to pi. So we're gonna find um, all our positive solutions first, and then we'll go and we'll find our negative solutions after. Okay, so same procedure, we're gonna find theta r. So you go inverse sine of whatever this ratio is, but make sure you plug it in positive. Ask yourself, um, where is my y value equal to that? And the answer is gonna be, oh, at pi over three. Okay, so those are the ones you memorize, okay? Now, where are my y values positive? Well, in quadrant one and in quadrant two. So one of my answers is indeed um, pi over three. Um, the other answer though is doo -doo 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 -doo, in quadrant two, right? So it means we're gonna rotate around and you're gonna go pi, subtract pi over three, right? So that's three pi over three, subtract pi over three, that's two pi over three. So there's my two answers from zero to two pi. Okay, so I considered all the positive answers. Those are the positive signs. Let's look at the negative answers. So that would be from zero to negative two pi, okay? Now, the only difference when we're doing these negative is we are rotating this way. So it doesn't change, like sine theta is still positive in quadrant one and in quadrant two, but we're starting a rotation from here. So if you were to sketch the picture, and that's pi over three. Now remember, this is zero, negative pi over two, negative pi, and you're starting here and you're rotating all the way that way, okay? So to find it in that quadrant, you have to go negative pi, and then remember you're rotating in a negative direction, so negative pi and then you subtract another pi over three. 
So in this case, you get negative 4 pi over 3. Well, that's interesting. Let's try it. <laughs> I just thought it was interesting. That was funny. Let's try the other one. So over here, remember, this is pi over 3. This is negative, um, uh, oh, geez, what is it? Uh, 3 pi over 2. And this is negative 2 pi. Right? So we're rotating from here all the way to there. Now, in this quadrant, how would you figure out like from here to here? Well, you could go from 0 to negative 2 pi, and then because you're moving backwards to meet the terminal arm, you're going to add pi over 3. So we're going to go negative 2 pi plus pi over 3. Get a common denominator. This is going to be multiplied by 3 over 3, so you get negative 6 pi over 3. Plus that, so you get negative 5 pi over 3. Now, that's all fine and dandy. Okay, that we get these answers when we're in the negative side. Um, the question is, do you need to do all this work? Okay, and the answer is maybe. Okay, so I like to do the work because then you actually understand what you're doing. Like you're rotating from here, you're going in a negative direction. That all makes sense. So I encourage you to do it this way. However, there is a shortcut and I don't mind the shortcut as long as you understand this. And the shortcut is this. Just use coterminal angles to find them. Okay, so find your positive angles, and then you know these angles here are the same as these ones, right? They're just coterminal. You're just moving in the other direction to get there, but the angles themselves have not moved. I should say the terminal arms haven't moved, right? Just the, road, the way we're getting to them has. So you can use coterminal angles, right? Just subtract. 2 pi. So if you want to get these two answers, take your first two answers here and subtract 2 pi. So just go pi over 3, subtract 2 pi. Now get a common denominator. So this is going to be 6 pi over 3. And then you're going to get pi over 3, subtract 6 pi over 3. You get negative 5 pi over 3. Ooh, that's where that one came from, right? Take your other answer, the 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3, subtract 2 pi. Now, get a common denominator. This is 6 pi over 3, so you get negative 4 pi over 3. And let's go back and check. Aha! There it is. Okay. So you have four answers for this one. This would be a four-mark question on the exam, and yes, sometimes it comes up like that. You just never know what you're going to get. Okay. I think we should deal with this... Um, this one that's cotangent. I'm just gonna do some quick erasing here to get rid of this stuff. Okay, so pause the video if you didn't get it. Now, when we have a non-primary trig ratio, our strategy is that we are going to convert it to be a trig ratio we can deal with. So cotangent is related to tangent. If you do the reciprocal of that ratio, you will have what tangent was. So I'm looking for where tangent was equal to the square root of 3. Now, I do recommend on the unit circle that you memorize. So you've got um, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. The tan values, the tan values go 1 over square root 3 for that one. This one is 1, and this one here is square root 3. So there's sort of a pattern, right? It's 1 over square root 3, 1, so the numerator 1, and then the next one's the denominator. So that's how I used to remember. So this is going to be a theta r value. When you go inverse tan of square root 3, you're going to get a theta r value of pi over 3. Okay. Now you just need to think, well, where is tangent positive? So tangent is positive in quadrants 1 and 3, right? Because down here, y and x are both negative, so overall tangent is positive. So one of your answers is just pi over 3. Your other answer, you're down here, you sketch your reference angle, you're rotating around that way, that's pi. So I'm going to have to go pi plus pi over 3 to get that one. And once you get a common denominator, that's going to be 4 pi over 3. So there's your two answers, and you're done. Kablamo! Perfect! That was really hard. Those are some big questions that we just went through. So I might recommend that you pause the video, try them again, and watch it again, or just make sure you get the right answers. Again, that wouldn't be a bad exercise. Now, on the exam, you will also get some calculator questions for a trig. So they'll give you the exact value ones, generally one, on the non-calculator part. And then on the calculator part, you might get another trig question that might look like this. 
So they like to mess with the intervals and they'll give you a value that you haven't uh, memorized. Um, big giveaways are you're on the calculator part of the exam and you, the only values you memorize are half, square root three over two for sine and cos, right? Um, zero, one, negative one, one. So if it's not one of those values for sine or cos, you know it's a calculator question. Uh, okay, so calculator question, nothing changes the, except for the first step where you're simply actually going to go to your calculator. So when you go and do inverse cos of a quarter, you would actually type that in on your calculator. Make sure you're in radians, okay? Unless, watch the interval, unless you're doing it in degrees, but they generally don't. So, for your theta r, uh, when I typed it in, I got 1.318. Also remember that on the exam, um, unless otherwise stated, they want you to round to three decimal places. Okay, so if the question doesn't say they are expecting three, okay? So there you have it. Um, now we're just looking for, okay, where is cosine positive because it's positive a quarter. So cosine is my x values, quadrant one, quadrant four. So in quadrant one, it's simply the, the reference angle. So that is one of my answers. In quadrant four, I have to sketch and I know this is 2 pi and this is 1.318. So I'm going to go 2 pi, subtract that to get my answer. So here we go, 2 pi, subtract 1.318. Remember, calculate the question, so go 2 times pi, subtract that number, and you're going to get 4.965. There you go, the two answers. As long as you clearly circle your answers, you're going to be fine on the exam. So, now, part B, well, this one's a little bit trickier because, first of all, it's cosecant. So the first thing we're going to have to deal with is getting rid of the cosecant by using the definition. So cosecant is the one that's related to, which one is it, sine? Is it cos? It's sine. Okay, so right away, you'll write it as sine, and just do the reciprocal of this, and you'll figure out, oh, okay, it used to be sine of negative a third. Perfect. Then watch the interval. If you have a negative portion of the interval, what I recommend you do every time is do the positive part first. So the positive part is just start at zero and go to the, the, to the positive number you got. Okay, so now notice I'm going from zero to three pi over two. So that would include this quadrant. This is pi, this is three pi over two, this is two pi. Okay, so it's quadrant one, two, and three, and they're cutting out quadrant four, so we won't consider any answers here if there are any, okay? So, go find your reference angle. So theta r is inverse sine, and always plug in the positive version of that unless you want to possibly make a mistake, okay? Because we're finding it in quadrant one so that we can use it to find it in whatever quadrant we need. So when you go and you type that in, um, I got 0.340. All right, so now, where is sine negative? Well, it's negative, not here, not here. Ah, it's negative right here in this quadrant. So I'm just gonna put 0.34. It's also negative in quadrant four, but remember, we tossed that. Okay, so that, that's outside of our domain that we want. So we're just going to give the one answer there. So we're gonna write theta equals, well, it's going to be pi plus, 0 0.340. So type that in on your calculator and you should get. No, my work's a little messy. Here it looks like 3.48. And I can't tell if that's a, a 0 or a 2. Let me quickly just. It says it's a 3.48. Is it a 1? Okay. I'm not sure if I, I didn't use the pi button, so hopefully that's, that's okay. All right, now, what about the negative part? Well, just consider the negative interval from zero to negative pi over two. Now, you can try to use coterminal angles. The problem is, is because they cut out one of the quadrants here, that might not work in this case. So you're just best to think about this one. So they're going from here to there, and every other one of these quadrants are cut out. Now remember, this is a quadrant where, pi, where sine is indeed negative. So there's your terminal arm, you're traveling in that direction, and it's 0 0.34. So in this quadrant, when you're doing negative, um, your angle is the reference angle, so the answer is going to be negative 0 0.340.
a little bit tricky, but there you have it, right? It's negative because you're traveling in the negative direction. Perfect. We've got another one here with secant. Um, now, again, if you have secant, you're going to immediately change it to cos theta, which is the ratio that it is, has in the formula. You just do the reciprocal. So it's 1 over 2.5. Um, now, uh, we got that ugly. Yeah, let's do it because this will be good practice. So from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. So just first of all, consider from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, Find your theta r by going inverse cos of whatever ratio it is. Type that in on your calculator, and you'll get 1.159, okay? Now, where is cos theta positive? Which quadrants? Where are my x values positive? Quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So in quadrant 1, we get 1.159. In quadrant 4, if we quickly sketch the picture, so this is 2 pi. We're going to rotate from there to there. So we're going to go 2 pi, subtract. So go 2 pi, subtract 1.1. Five, nine, and you're going to get 5.124. All right, so there's the answers from 0 to 2 pi. Let's do our trick. So when we go from 0, or rather, when we go from negative 2 pi to 0, okay, so do the negative side, all we got to do is subtract 2 pi from both of those to get your answer. Okay, so here you go. Subtract 2 pi and... Subtract 2 pi. Now, I don't know which answer is which, but I'm going to guess here. So, the, this first one, yeah, this one's going to give us negative 5.124. This one is going to give us, and you can double check, negative 1.159. So, there you have it. One, two, three, four answers. That would be all the work you need to show on the exam. So, using coterminal angles is pretty important. Remember when I said coterminal angles is this easy concept that gets used all the time in trig? Well, I wasn't lying. I would lie to you guys. No, I wouldn't. Unless I had a reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. More questions. Yeah, you can get questions like this too. So sometimes they give you a coordinate and they might ask you to find some trig ratios or, or what have you. So in this particular question, uh, they give us this and they say find tan theta. So in order to do that, we're going to have to sketch the coordinate. Now this is in quadrant one, right? And x is one and y is two. And you don't have to do it to scale. So what I like to do is I'll just go one comma two, drop that down, label that as one. Y value is two, so that's two. There's theta r, and we don't know the r value, right? The r value comes from this formula, Pythagoras, right? So you can go do one squared is one, plus 2 squared, which is 4, is 5. And when you do the square root, you get the square root of 5. Now, tangent is, so tan theta is y over x. Oops, I guess I did a bit more work than I needed. I wasn't thinking. Um, my tan ratio is y over x. I had y and x already. So I'm sorry, I did a bit of extra work. We didn't need to find the r value, but maybe it was good practice. So there's tan theta, it's equal to 2. Now they're saying, well, can you find theta from 0 to 2 pi? Well, perfect. Those are the questions we were just doing. So now it's like they're saying, hey, tan theta equals 2, find theta from 0 to 2 pi. It's the same questions as last time. This is not an exact value, right? So you're going to have to go find it on your calculator. Okay, so plug in inverse tan of 2. And let's see, I got... 1.107. So there you have it. And then ask yourself, where is tan positive? Well, quadrant one, and we knew that because that's where our triangle came from, but also quadrant three. Okay, so one of our answers is going to indeed be the reference angle, 1.107. Over here in quadrant three, just remember you're going from there to there. That's pi, so we're going to go pi plus the reference angle, pi plus 1.107. 007. <laughs> uh, and what did I get? 4.249. There. So there's your two answers. You're done. Let's try another one. That was so much fun. Now, this one a bit more involved. They're asking for sine theta and cos theta, so we will need to know r, right? Because sine, uh, oops, cos theta is x over r, sine theta is y over r. Okay, so we'll need to find r. 
Um, you don't necessarily need to draw the triangle, okay? It doesn't have to happen, um, as long as you realize this is x and this is y, and when you're doing this formula, you're plugging in those values with brackets, right? So I'll show a bit more work than last time, like we're gonna go two squared plus negative three squared, Right, so this is going to give us 4, this is going to give us 9. When you add them up, you get 13. Do the square root on both sides, and now you have your R value. Okay? You don't need to reduce or simplify or anything. Then do your sine theta ratio. Be careful. What quadrant are you in when you have that point? So maybe it is a good idea to draw the picture, but when your x value is positive and your y value is negative, you are in quadrant um, do, 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 4. Okay? So your sine ratio should be negative because the y value is negative. So you're going to get negative 3 over square root 13. And then for cos, x value is positive, 2 over square root 13. Wonderful. Okay, now, for this question, finding theta from 0 to 2 pi. It doesn't really matter which ratio you use, okay? So you can use uh, cos, okay? It really doesn't matter, but you gotta pick one. Now, I am gonna use cos because it's positive and I think that's a little bit easier, so. Go find your reference angle. So if you can do inverse cos of whatever ratio it was, obviously not an exact value. Make sure you're in radians. Just looking for my answer here. I got 0 0.983. Now, we need to go and consider uh, where is cos positive? Let's see, well, we know quadrant one and quadrant four, okay? So in quadrant one, we have our answer. In quadrant four, this is two pi, you're rotating from there to there. So you're going to go two pi, subtract the reference angle, which was this. When you do that, I have an answer here, you get 5.300. Done. Got your two answers. Make sure you circle them. Indication on the exam of what you, where your final answer is. Oh, you know, I really don't feel like doing this one. Let's just, it's too much. We've, we've done so much already. Let's, let's just leave it at that. Um, and you know what, I'll turn it into a try it yourself. If you want to try this one, um, I have the answers here. I did it before. So for part C, you're going to get theta equals 0 0.983 and you're also going to get negative 0.983 um, I didn't really yeah that's fine that's good perfect all right we are near the end thank goodness because this has been very long and very horrible how many more pages do we have there's so many more pages okay we still have to do uh, S equals theta R stuff. So, okay. It's another question. Uh, they love doing this question on the exam for a couple of reasons. So they give you a cos ratio, or they give you a ratio. It could be sine, cos, or tan. They give you a ratio, and they say, well, what are the other trig ratios? So it's similar to this question, except this question they're giving you the point on the terminal arm, and this question they're not giving you the point on the terminal arm, they're giving you one of the ratios. Just remember that cos is x over r, so the x value is negative 2, the r value is 3. So basically they're setting you up in such a way that you can figure out, well, where is cos, um, where, where is cos negative basically, well in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. Now, generally they will give you another piece of information, right, because I could be in either one of those quadrants, which would mean that I have to find five trig ratios here, five trig ratios there, that's a lot of work. So I will just add, if cos is this, um, and let's just say theta is in quadrant two. Okay, so they'll give you some sort of indication. They might give it like this, they might say, oh, your theta is in quadrant two, um, or they might say something like, and, you know, sine theta is positive. So sometimes they'll do something like that. If sine theta is positive, we have to be in quadrant two because in quadrant three, sine theta would be negative. So watch out because they generally do something like that. So we're gonna go with quadrant two. We can sketch this out. My R value is three, and I know my X value is negative two. I don't know the Y value. I'll have to find it using my formula. So I know that Y squared is equal to X squared minus R squared. 
I do believe that they do it right. Uh, I think so, right? Yeah, I don't know, maybe I got it backwards here. Here, I'll just write it out. Feeling a little drained at the end of the day here. So we started here. Yeah, I solved it for y squared. So I'm gonna get um, r squared minus x squared equals y squared. So I did make a mistake. So um, r value is three, subtract my x value, which is negative two, that's y squared. So here I get nine, subtract four, which is five. So I get square root five equals y. Perfect. So what are the other trig ratios? Well, we already knew that cos theta equals negative two over three. So I can find secant theta where I just do the reciprocal. There. Sine theta is y over r. So y is the square root of five, like that. The uh, trig ratio that's related to it, that's the inverse of it, is cosecant. So there's that. And then we got tan theta, which is y over x. So my y value is square root 5. My x value is negative 2. Then find the inverse of it, so cotangent theta. There you have it. Now that's a lot of work. Um, question B is also a lot of work. And we've done a lot of these questions already. Um, I'll get you started and then I'd recommend that you pause it um, and find them on your own because you should know how to do it already. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use, uh, you know, cos theta was given, so I might go ahead and just use that. So I'm, I'm going to use uh, cos theta being negative. So find your reference angle. Now I'm just going to quickly double check this one just to make sure if I can figure out how to get this calculator that has the buttons all faded into um, radians, which I might not be successful at. Oh boy, we are uh -huh. No, degrees, radians, perfect. Okay, so inverse cos of two thirds. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure, um, but I was missing a decimal, so it's 0 0.841. Okay, so once you have that, you're going to be looking uh, from zero to two pi, where's cos negative, here and here, okay? So go find, your angle's right, go draw it out, you're finding this one, that's pi, you're finding that one, okay? Pause the video, try it out, then use coterminal angles to find it on the interval of negative two pi to zero. So all your final answers are this, you're going to get, um, now granted, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going to use this value. That's the value I had in my notes. I know it's slightly off. I rounded it correctly. So my numbers are going to be slightly different than yours. So there's the, the first one. You're also going to get 3.98. Uh, and then you're going to get negative 3.98. And then you're going to get negative 2.3. Perfect. There's all the answers. All right. This is an exactly the same kind of question. Um, so it's, it's quite ugly. Uh, let's see, what do they want? The nearest tenth to find the possible values. Uh, yeah, I think we can safely skip this one. It's exactly the same as the one we just did. And this is getting quite long. So let's skip it. Um, some more try it yourselves. We can skip it. We've, tr we've done lots of those now. The final topic. I would like to do the final topic. It's very short. It involves our formula S equals theta R. Okay. And they on um, every exam for the last like five or six years, they've always had some kind of question on the calculator part of the exam that has to do with this. Okay? So the arc length is just arc means a curved length. So the arc length S is described by this formula theta times R. Okay? Uh, when we're on the unit circle, uh, we know that r is equal to 1, but uh, it, it scales up for other circles, so the formula works everywhere. 
Um, yeah, we said that one rating is when S equals R, that was the measure of one rating. Uh, what you need to be sure in these questions is that your units will match, okay? So make sure that units are matching and you should be okay. If you were to rearrange this formula, you could actually solve for theta. So if you take S equal theta R and just solve it for theta, you're going to get that S divided by R is equal to theta. So there's the other one, okay? There's the formula again. Um, yeah, if you're going to go use it, just be careful. Everything needs to be in radians, so watch out for that, because every once in a while they try to sneak it in on you in degrees. And we've got a couple questions here. So here's question number one. It says, if a wheel of radius 40 centimeters rolls three meters, so notice the mismatch in units, okay? So your units have to match. So you'll have to turn one, uh, one of them into meters or the other one into centimeters. It doesn't matter as long as they match. What is the angle of rotation in degrees? Remember, when we find theta, so when we go theta equals s over r, we will need to remember that it gives it to us in radians, but they want it in degrees, so we'll have to convert. So there's lots of things going on in this question. Um, let's see, uh, I, I'm gonna convert meters into centimeters, so that's the same thing as 300 centimeters. So the radius of a wheel is 40, so R is 40 centimeters, um, and it rolls 3 meters. Well, rolls, that's the arc length, okay? So it rolls 3 meters, so the arc length S is 300, okay? So now you can go theta equals S over R, theta equals 300 over 40, uh, you get 30 over 4, uh, you get 7.5 radians which is a great intermediate step, but they want it in degrees. So just remember to get it in degrees, that was the first part of this lesson. You're going to go 7.5 times 180 divided by pi. So you can understand why they put these on the calculator part of the exam. You get 429.72 degrees. All done. Okay, part B, Ferris wheel question. Uh, let's see, a Ferris wheel has a radius of 40 meters. So that would be R and it rotates through an angle of 200 degrees. Be careful, that's theta. But remember, for our formula to work, it needs to be in radians. So we're going to convert it right away. We're gonna times it by pi over 180. Plug that in on your calculator, and you're gonna get 3.49 radians, okay? And what are they gonna be looking for? What is the arc length of the rotation? Perfect, well, um, S equal theta R. We're looking for um, the arc length S, so we can simply plug everything in. So 3.49, we know R is 40. And we get 139.6 meters. That's a big rotation, that's a big Ferris wheel. Hooray, it sounds like so much fun. Whew, guys. The last question. Now this one's kind of funky, but bear with me. So it says two cities are at the same longitude. City A is 29 degrees north. Now we need to draw a little sketch here. So I just imagine this, and you know, the earth is like a sphere, right? Okay, so imagine we superimpose our axis on the earth. There's city A, there's the terminal arm. Um, so it's at 29 degrees, so this is 29. Um, north, right, so towards the north, so there you go. City B is 43 degrees south, so here's the south, here's city B, and we're going 49 degrees towards the south. Um, if the earth has a diameter of approximately 1,200, 12,800 kilometers, well, why does that matter? So here's our earth, so remember, this is the radius from there to there, right, so that's the radius. So if we Cut that in two, we'll have the, the radius of our big giant sphere, big giant circle. You get 6,400 kilometers when we do that. Um, find the distance between the two cities. So the distance between the two cities, you'd have to travel along the curve, right? So that would be S, and this here would be theta. So theta is 29 plus 49. And I wrote that down somewhere, 72 degrees, right? We're going to have to get it in radians, so we'll multiply by pi over 180, and I'll tell you, you get 
five, seven radians. And they are looking for the distance, so S. So this is a fancy question where they're just asking for S equal theta R. So plug in your two numbers, um, 1.257 times the radius of the Earth. <laughs> I love saying that, that sounds so fancy. The radius of the Earth, multiply them together, you get 8,042 kilometers. So you can see that's actually a pretty crazy question we just did, uh, but there you have it. Um, we are all done. I am so happy to be done. I'm not going to lie. This is a massive lesson, so um, break the video up into chunks, man. You know, press pause, do your homework, be good. See you next time.